Um, this interview is regarding file number 22-66177. Date is 2022, May 16th. Time right now is 12.48. We are at the uh, Annex building, 265 East Cordova Street in the city of Vancouver. I'm now in the primary interviewer, Constable Jin Kim, pin number 3284. The monitor is going to be Detective Amber McElroy, pin number 2343. Short synopsis, on February 25th, 2022, Patrick Fox was convicted of breach of probation. Fox was released from jail on April 17th, 2022. One of his probation conditions was to not disseminate, distribute, publish, or make publicly available in any manner whatsoever, directly or indirectly, information, statements, comments, videos, or photographs, which refers to or depict Caplano. As of today, his website, www.desicaplano.com, is still open to the general public, which is in contravention to his probation conditions. Fox also failed to report to his probation officer on April 21st, which was part of his probation conditions. The subject was arrested by arrest officer using a prepared arrest script, which I reviewed. I'm satisfied that all of the requirements of Section 10A and 10B of the Charter have been satisfied, that uh, Mr. Fox has been given the official warning, and that Mr. Fox is aware that he is subject to audio video recording while in police custody. During the interview, I may make displeasing comments about people involved in this incident or about other people. These comments do not reflect my opinion or the opinion of the Vancouver Police Department. Time is 12.51. I'm going to turn the audio device off, okay? But this room is being uh, videotaped and not in okay? I'd really prefer if you left that on because you guys have a lot of technical problems with your audio. Like, for example, a year ago when uh, Tanino was interviewing me, the audio wasn't working in this room at all. And so the only thing we had was the, the DAR. Okay. Yeah, sure. Uh, so we previously turned the DAR off once we reached the interview room. Uh, it's 12.52. We've now returned it on as per Mr. Fox's request, just barring any sort of technical difficulties. It will remain on for the duration of the interview.
So, um, Mr. Fox, I haven't fully introduced myself to you. My name is Detective Amber McElroy. Amber? Amber McElroy. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you can call me Amber, though. Uh, is it okay if I call you Patrick? Would you prefer Mr. Fox? What would you prefer? Almost everybody in the world calls me Fox, so... You just but Fox? because our relationship is more professional, let's stick with Detective McElroy and Mr. Fox. Okay, good pronunciation. <laughs> Thank you for that. Not everybody gets it. Um, all right, so you've been dealing with my partner, and he was saying that there was a bit of um, confusion around your conditions, and I guess... No, there's no confusion around oh, okay. my conditions. No. Okay. Um, I was required to report one time, mm -hmm. only for the purpose of informing the probation officer uh, what steps, the exact steps I have taken to cause the website to no longer be available. Yes, okay. On the 19th of... April, mm -hmm. I reported in person, and I have the piece of paper in my bag from when they uh, signed it and said, you have to, we want you to come back in two days. And I told them that, no, I'm only required to report one time. It says right here in the probation order. I just have to report one time for the purpose of informing them of what steps I've taken to cause the website to no longer be available. And I don't have to report any second or third or subsequent times. Um, okay. And so then I called Crown Counsel Chris Johnson afterwards to let him know that the probation department was making a fuss, saying mm -hmm. they wanted me to come back in two days. And he said, well, it's my understanding you're only required to report one time, and you did that, so it's done. 
My apologies, who did you call? Chris Johnson. And who, where does he work? Uh, he's the ad hoc crown counsel on the last few cases they oh, prosecuted okay. against me. Okay. So because he gave you the understanding that that was sufficient? The judge gave me the understanding that that was sufficient because okay. I don't know if you've read the probation order, but the condition very clearly states that I am required to report one time and mm -hmm. one time only. And once I have done that, there is no further reporting required. Okay. And so at that point when you went on the 19th, can you give me an idea of, of what you reported? What, did, did, sure. what steps did you take? Sure. I told uh, Julie, was her name, okay. that I have taken absolutely no steps to cause the website to be no longer available because the website went offline, is my understanding, a couple of weeks before I was released from custody. So at the time of my release, it was already offline. There was nothing that I either could do or would have to do. Okay. And how did you become aware that the website was offline? It's a good question. I don't really recall how it first came to my attention. Okay. And do you know who had the authority to take it offline, if not I you? I have absolutely no idea. Okay. <clears throat> Listen, the website, the website has not been under my control for a number of years. Okay. That was done deliberately. Like, I've been over this time and time and time again. Yeah. It was done on purpose because if I don't own or control the website, I can't be compelled to do anything with the website. Mm -hmm. um, and so, prior to being on probation, I gave up all control and so all the time that I've been on probation for the past three and a half years or so now, um, I've had no involvement and no ownership or control with the website. Okay. So, I mean, I'm not super tech savvy, um, but I know that you are. So if you give up control of the website, you'd have to put someone in charge of that, right? There's passwords, there's things that they would have to know. Is that not correct? Um, the current website, well, I can't call it current because the website went offline before I got released from custody. Okay, so that website uh, mm -hmm. went online while I was in custody. So I didn't have ownership or control of it right from the beginning. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not saying that I do or don't know who might have been involved in initially setting it up, but that's got nothing to do with why I'm here today. So I sure would like to know why it is that I'm here today since the website went offline before I got released from custody mm -hmm. and I was only required to report for probation one time. So both of those things were fulfilled. So why am I here? Yeah. So I'll, I'll tell you my understanding. So the probation condition, it's not actually something that we enforce. It's the probation officer. Mm -hmm. So what they've told us is that, yes, you did come in on the 19th. Mm -hmm. um, and at that point, you told them something differently. And they said that they wanted you to come back on the 21st mm -hmm. to meet with your actual probation officer. Because Julie, the woman you spoke to, is just the, like, the, the probation officer for that day, not your specific probation officer. Mm -hmm. So they made an appointment for you at that time to come back on the 21st. And when you didn't show up for that appointment on the 21st, that's what caused this warrant for your arrest. Oh, okay, wait, wait. So is there actually a warrant or is it just an investigation at this time? So there's a warrant um, for your arrest for that charge. Mm -hmm. And then secondary to that, you're being charged with failure to um, comply with your probation because the website's still up and running. So there's two charges. Well, okay, let's be clear though. You mm -hmm. said that the website is still up and running. Mm -hmm. The word still means that it has been up and running continuously. Is there some question as to whether or not it was actually so offline? I don't have any record of it being offline. What I have a record of and what probation saw on mm -hmm. the 21st was that it, today? April 21st um, is when they checked it before they issued the warrant. They checked it on April 21st and they're claiming it was online? Yes, password protected online. Well, okay, if it's accessible on the internet but there's a password on it mm -hmm. such that nobody can access mm -hmm. it, first, that would still meet the requirements because the requirement is that it not be available. Mm -hmm. It's not available if you require a password. Um, second, if it requires a password, how do they know there's anything there? Yeah. I mean, the page could just be blank. It still gives you previews on Google on what you're going to see potentially on that website. And I think um, we're arguing kind of semantics here. For me, being a novice, mm -hmm. offline means you can't get to it. There's no record of it. But you can actually type it into the, the search and you can actually have a point where it asks you for a password. So Crown is not considering that offline. Oh, that's fine. That's fine. They can, they can shove it up their ass. Mm -hmm. I don't give a fuck. 
Okay. Um, <laughs> go ahead, try to find some evidence that I have anything at all to do with this website. I mean, yeah, but we both know you know who's running it. No, I really don't. That was done on purpose. I can't tell you who's running it if I don't know who's running it. Okay. I mean, so can you walk me through how that happens? How what happens? How do you give an unknown person all of the information to access and control the website without knowing who that person is? Um, your question is based on the premise that I gave the content or the information to some unknown person. Um, that's not the case. So it's a known person. Okay, there's me, mm -hmm. there's a second person involved, which I've already stated, I've already testified about in court, my mm -hmm. friend Liz Munoz, and then there's some other third party beyond that. And who that other third party was that did whatever they did, um, I have no idea. I don't want to know. So Liz Munoz operated as your, your middleman, so to speak. I declined to answer. Okay. Liz Munoz at one point had access to your passwords for the website in order to pass them on to a third person. Well, no, because when the current, or not current, when the second version of the website went online, mm -hmm. it wasn't done with my passwords or anything. Mm -hmm. Like, it, they didn't need access to my accounts to do it. It was set up as a new website. Mm -hmm. If anything, I would require the passwords from them. Yeah. So. Okay. Anyway. I feel like we've been down this before. Okay. Sorry, and before we get too far into this, and I should have mentioned earlier because I just really wanted to answer your questions first. I know that you declined to speak to a lawyer um, yes. at the scene. You have an opportunity now. We can stop and we can, you can talk to a lawyer now. I know that typically you like to operate as your own lawyer. Has that changed? What's your preference and what you'd like to do right now? There's been no change in my preference. I have no interest in speaking with a lawyer who's just going to collude with the Crown and sabotage the case and so. Okay. If I'm going to lose a case anyway, I'd rather lose it by myself. Okay. And all of your contact today um, has been with myself and Detective uh, Jin Kim. And I just want to make sure that you haven't had the impression or the conversation or thought that we've promised you any incentives to participate in this process or told you that anything could go poorly for you if you don't participate in this process. Um... Sure. Okay, I mean, I just... Sorry, I'm giving a question yeah. that is as vague as mm -hmm. the proposition that you had just made. Um, I mean, to say that... Um, okay, if I cooperate and answer the questions, then things are likely to go better for me, or you would think, anyway, that they would be likely to go better for me than if I didn't cooperate. So, I mean, the question is kind of silly. Well, I'm just asking if... Detective been, Kim or myself has had that conversation with you. Um, no, but I'm familiar with the conversation. We can skip all the boilerplate. Um, okay. all right. There's been no threats. There's been no uh, uh, offers of any kind of benefits. Okay, thank you. Um, there has, however, been an inquiry about coffee and cigarettes. And what was the answer to that? I'm sorry, I wasn't privy. It was left in the book. Okay, did you say that you'd like coffee? Oh, of course I would like coffee and okay. cigarettes, but... Um, I will, I can check now with my mm. partner to see what the status is on that. Okay.
We've got two cups here for you. There's no cream. Um, there's a sugar cube in each one. So oh, gross. I take it black, but I'll put up with the sugar cube. Okay, there's just one. So, I should have asked. Uh, we can't do anything about cigarettes, sorry. No, I guess crack is out of the question too then. Huh? Crack is out of the question. Um, did you have any cigarettes that you had in your bag? No, I had to go pick some up. Okay, alright. We're just gonna push through then. Sure. That's right with you. Um, okay, <coughs> so again, I don't have full file knowledge that you've probably picked up on. Your file has been in our unit for quite a while and it's rotated through detectives and I, I know that you've, you've been dropping names so you're familiar with who you've dealt with in the past. Um, I'm obviously a new face to you and I've done a bit of research as much as I could about your file and I understand what you're saying is you've given up control, so to speak, on your website. But knowing who the middle person is, that control potentially could be seized back. And I guess that's the sticking Wait, point for Crown. No, no, see, Crown, Crown brought this up to Chris Johnson, that fucking dipshit at the trial. Mm -hmm. um, he argued that since Munoz uh, took care of the arrangements to have the website put back online back in 2018 while I was in custody and therefore couldn't have possibly had anything to do with it, mm -hmm. um, that if I wanted to get the website taken down now, I could go through her and then she would be able to provide me the information or something. Mm -hmm. um, but no, that's not the case. I mean, she no longer has anything to do with it now. Mm -hmm. And even if she did, why would she help me? I mean, yeah. you guys have no influence over her. She's in the US. She doesn't give a shit about what happens up here in Canada. Mm -hmm. And she can't stand my ex-wife. So, I mean, yeah. but anyway, why does any of this matter? Uh, well, I'm just looking at the website. So it was password protected for a period of time and then sometime over the weekend it popped back up and it's open to the public again. Mm. Um, there's some interesting updates in there which include information about disclosure from your trial, mm -hmm. which as you representing yourself, you would have free and fair access to. I'm wondering how the person running your website would have access to that information. Um, I don't know, but that's not really relevant anyway because there's nothing in any of the probation conditions that prohibits me from publishing any information about my cases. I'm only prohibited from publishing information about Capuano. Mm -hmm. um, and so, if any information about my cases ended up in someone's hands and they forwarded it to someone and somewhere along the line it ended up on the internet, it doesn't violate any probation conditions, so it's simply not relevant. But um, you said that there was the password was taken off or something. Mm -hmm. So what's online right now? Um, it's a full website as it was before with some updates. Interesting. Mm -hmm. So then, if I have a probation condition that says that I am required to take all necessary steps to ensure that the website is no longer available via the internet or any other means, which is essentially what the probation condition says, if the website goes back online. How quickly am I supposed to take these necessary steps to get it taken down again? Am I supposed to fucking watch the website 24 hours a day, 7 days a week? I mean, mm -hmm. that would seem a little ridiculous. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, I think the whole consensus though is uh, what you're providing is not having control over this website does not, to me, seem plausible because I don't care. you've built this. You've taken pride in building Wait, it. Let me You've ask you a question. Spoken to the media about it. Uh -huh. If you mm -hmm. own a car mm -hmm. today, does that mean that ten years down the road you still own that car? Mm -hmm. Are you not able to transfer that car? Can you not abandon that car? Mm -hmm. I mean, why does everybody assume that just because I created the website eight fucking years ago mm -hmm. that I must still own it and run it? Because in your subsequent interviews, you've openly said that you the website will continue to be up. In yes, it interviews. will be because I have no fucking control over it. And you've said you if, it gets, you want, if it gets it's taken matter. down, it's going to pop up again because I've saved all the content. It's important to you that this website is up and running and that it continues. You've made that very, very clear. And for someone of your intelligence and your skill set to just hand that over to someone else, it just, to me, I don't quite get it. Tell me something. Mm -hmm. If I'm so intelligent that I could set up this website and do all this stuff and I'm so sneaky about it and I'm able to do it in such a way that technically you guys can never prove that it's me, um, there's I have no ties to British Columbia or to Canada at all. Um, why am I still here then? Why would I 
keep the website online or put the website back online, you guys knowing that I'm at the Belkin House, um, and then just sit around and wait for you guys to come and arrest me? Well, what were your plans after the Belkin House? That seems pretty fucking implausible, too, you got to admit. Yeah, but your last day at the Belkin House is coming up. What no, were I your plans after that? I had an extension. No, I understand that, but it's coming up still within this month. So what's what were your plans after that for a place to stay? I don't know. Maybe go to the Yukon, maybe yeah. go back to Los Angeles. Who knows? I mean, I can't really plan more than a day or two in advance because mm -hmm. I know you guys can come at any moment and accuse me of whatever ridiculous thing and arrest mm -hmm. me again. So. Yeah. I was you have spent day day. a lot of time in custody, is that? Yeah, six years. And, and that seems to be within your control. No. Um, oh, of course, because all I have to do is take down the website, right? Mm. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Have you made efforts to try to do that? Well, or are you just are you washing your hands of the whole thing and it's out of your control, you can't? Upon my release from custody, there were no efforts to make. The website was offline. I mean, and when I first got released, there was no password or anything. There was just a, what was it, a 401 or a 403 mm -hmm. message because um, the content had been deleted or something. Yeah. Um, and then subsequent to that, at some point, somebody put a password on there. Mm -hmm. um, why they put a password, I don't know. Okay. And how does someone get your disclosure for those recent updates on the website against a woman who you're not supposed to have? Well, this up and running, right? So having those updates and making the website relevant and current mm -hmm. would be um, in violation of your condition. Let me ask you this question. Sure. All the stuff that you're talking about, this disclosure material and stuff mm -hmm. that's on the website, um, if that same material was put onto a different website that wasn't called desicapuano.com, let's say if it was called... Um, rvfox.com or something, mm -hmm. there would be absolutely nothing about that that would violate the probation conditions. I mean, I would probably agree with that, yeah. Right. So, putting that content, um, making that content accessible under uh, desicapuano.com, the domain name, mm -hmm. like, or likewise, doesn't violate any probation conditions. The website itself um, was required to, oh sorry, I'm not even required to take the website down. I'm only required to take all steps necessary to cause the website to be no longer available. Upon my release from custody, mm -hmm. the website was no longer available, therefore there was nothing for me to do in that respect. And the other probation condition simply prohibits me from publishing any information about uh, Capuano. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what new information has been put up there that you're referring to, but uh, I'm assuming it probably has nothing to do with Kepwana. Well, it has to do with your proceedings, and That's someone got that information, if it wasn't you that posted it, got that information from likely yourself. Regardless, let's say, for the sake of argument, mm -hmm. let's say that I took all that disclosure material and I emailed it to editor at desicapuano.com the email address which has been right there on the website for as long as I can recall. Um, by doing that, still, I would not be violating the probation conditions because there is nothing in the probation conditions that prohibits me from publishing or sharing or disseminating the disclosure material. Mm -hmm. Your conditions actually state that mm -hmm. it has to be no longer available by the internet. Yes. So it is available by password. Well, according to you, from what you're telling me, it's... It was quite, for okay, a short period I'm, I'm of time. I'm sorry, you're, you said it was available by password. Mm -hmm. How do you know? Like, did you know what the password was? I mean, I had tried to go to it and it prompted me for a name and a password. I didn't know the name and the password, so I just went, okay, fuck it, it's not my problem anymore. The website's not accessible, so I don't give a shit. Maybe when I go back to the US, maybe I'll see what I can do about taking it back or something. But for now, it's not my problem. Um, but it sounds to me like you're saying that behind the password, there was actually some, some content there. So I'm curious, like, did you have the password? Did somebody give you access to the site? No, I don't have access. Then to how it. do you know there was anything there? How do you know there wasn't just a blank page? Like that, okay, to put a password like that on a website, mm -hmm. I mean, it's just a matter of, in Apache, it's just one configuration setting in a, in a text file. Mm -hmm. um, like, there's no reason for anyone to believe, me included, that there was anything being hidden by that password. 
Well, there's no reason to believe that it isn't, though, and that's the question, I guess. I think it's the unknowing. Yep, the, assumption, the assumption would be that there is something mm -hmm. there. Either way, it's the URL with her mm -hmm. name in it, with a password, mm -hmm. um, and then it's been removed, and now it's up and live again. Okay, well, I don't know anything about so, that, so I can comment on that. So we are um, following up with that, and that's why you're here today, because okay. you're being charged with that violation, because it's up and live. And because we believe, and Crown Council believes, that you do have control of the website, mm -hmm. and, and you obviously are saying that you don't, and that's well, what's getting debated. Tell right? me something. Mm -hmm. If you're so convinced that I have access or control over the website, why is it that in the past three or four years that I've been prosecuted three times, and now we're about to start a fourth one mm -hmm. for this, nobody has ever come up with a single piece of evidence tying me to the website? Nobody has made any attempt to contact the hosting provider to ask, Whose name is on the account? Whose credit card is paying for the account? Mm -hmm. yeah. Who is the hosting provider right now? GoDaddy. GoDaddy? Oh, sorry. As far as I know, it's mm -hmm. GoDaddy. Okay. But clearly there have been changes made recently that I wasn't aware of, so... Mm -hmm. Tell me something else. Mm -hmm. If the Crown is so concerned about this website and about protecting Capuano, because, of course, they don't want to admit that their concern is that there's disclosure material or something that makes them look bad, so... They keep arguing that Desiree Capuano needs to, be, needs to be protected from this website. So why is it that nobody has bothered to try to get a U.S. court order to get this website taken down? Why is it that the only thing they've done is prosecute me and put me in jail for it? Because that clearly is not causing the website to come down. Mm -hmm. So it seems if, if their concern is protecting Capuano, it seems that what they should be doing is probably trying to get a U.S. court order, right? Yeah. To make GoDaddy it's, take the website down? It's a, it's a multiple process, and we have made attempts with... GoDaddy before, and it was down for a period of time. Yes, it was down for 90 days. Mm -hmm. um, and that's something that we're working on as well. Obviously, this would be facilitated a lot quicker if you just made the calls and got it taken down. Um, and the belief is that you do have control, and that's obviously the most easy, direct route for us to follow through with. But you're right, we might have to go through Please. U.S. court it's, orders. It's been which three years, and it's you have been, done nothing to do that mm -hmm. because you know that no U.S. court is going to give you uh, an injunction like against GoDaddy to take this website down because there is absolutely nothing illegal on there. Okay. Um, I don't believe that's the consideration. I believe that we're a very busy police department and this is taking enough to have a your lot officers. of resources. Yes, it is. So why do you yes. keep doing it? It's such, okay, it's such we, a We feel equally frustrated. You could simply not investigate it. You could simply mm -hmm. go, you know what, we have bigger fucking things to deal with. We have people actually killing each other and raping each other and such. Mm -hmm. Um, but instead, you want to have to write all these RTCCs and have to come and testify in court, and every time you guys come and testify in court, I end up making somebody look like a complete fucking idiot. Um, last time it was Dent, because mm. I caught him lying about stuff at the previous trial. Mm. Anyway. Um, yeah, I don't know why you're going through all this ordeal either. And I, it would be nice. It would be nice to hear mm -hmm. that you're contacting um, Liz and you're making efforts, and she should know who's involved, and that this is something that you've done to the exhausted to your full measures of your ability to get this website down. But I think you're enjoying just sitting back and washing your hands of it and saying it's got a life of its own now that I gave it, and now I have no control, and my ex-wife now is going to be harassed for the rest of her life, and it's not going to be on me. Okay, I don't believe that she's harassed in the slightest bit by this because in the eight years that this website has existed, she has never once filed a single complaint with the hosting provider. She filed one complaint about some emails, mm -hmm. but that had nothing to do with the website. She has never done anything at all to get this website taken down. All she's done is things that could be reasonably expected to result in me being arrested and imprisoned. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't think we fully know to the extent that she's been affected by this. I haven't, you know? You would think that she would at least file a complaint with GoDaddy if she was mm -hmm. being affected in any way at all. And you don't know that she hasn't? No, I do know. Well, actually, sorry. I can't say that I know 100% for certain, but because I'm quite confident. Because you don't confident. run the site. Well, no, I'm saying like, okay, if she had filed a complaint, then the complaint would have been forwarded to the person whose name is on the uh, hosting account. And I would think that maybe that person would notify me of it, but... So you are aware of who that person is, and they Editor have a way... Editor at desicapuano.com. They have a way of contacting you. I have an email address, patrickhfox mm -hmm. at gmail.com. Mm -hmm. They have an email address, editor at desicapuano.com. So I've sent have... them emails. Okay, and so we have your devices. Yes. Um, 
it would be a lot easier for us to be able to go in and, and take a look at those emails and make sure there's no familiarity, that you're not first name basis, that yeah. you don't have that relationship. Are you willing to assist us with that? I think I think that you know the answer to that question. Yeah, I know that it's been asked before. So this yes, is what I'm talking about. You're talking about us using all our resources and wasting your time and you getting imprisoned, but you're not taking steps to assist the investigation to show that you're not culpable. Because I've done that in the past. I've assisted and cooperated with mm -hmm. the police and the prosecutors in the past, and instead they they just act nice and friendly, and they try to get information from me that they can twist and distort, and then they try to bury anything that might prove that I'm innocent. So I don't cooperate with you guys anymore, because it's there's no benefit for me to cooperate with you to give you the information that you're looking for. Like, for example, you don't want to go into my devices and find some emails that I may or may not have sent to editor at desicapuano.com. You want access to my devices so you can go search through them to try to find something else that might be incriminating. Because if what you wanted was access to that email, mm -hmm. you don't need my devices for that. Mm -hmm. This was already covered at the most recent trial. It's in a Gmail account. It's on the server. Mm -hmm. Any computer can be used to access it. Mm -hmm. So. It would be nice too, we'd be looking for files of the recent content that's been posted on the website and see if they're in, you know, in mm -hmm. the forms there on your devices. Because of course I'd be dumb enough to leave something incriminating on there. You seem to like to spend time in jail. No, no, but I sure do like exposing corruption and misconduct. Yeah. And that might just coincidentally be something I have in common with whoever's running the website, but simply because I like exposing corruption and misconduct in the justice system doesn't mm -hmm. mean that I'm the person putting the stuff on the website. Okay. But you have contact with them. Likely this person... I have sent them emails. Like would, my release, would be I swayed them. by your uh, Clearly request? Clearly not, because the website so, is still there. So I I'm asking you, have you, have you requested that this person take the website down? Yes. There was the email that I sent in August of last year that I didn't have access to at the time of the interrogation because obviously I didn't have my devices or access to the internet. So I told Tanino and Roberts at the time that I'll be able to provide them a copy of that email once I get released from custody, which I expected was probably going to be in about three years. And then of course that came up at the trial and the Crown said that he doesn't believe, and the judge said she doesn't believe that I sent that email because if I did then I would have provided it and I would have given a copy to somebody. But then it turns out that the judge admits that she thought I actually had access to the internet while I was in custody. Mm -hmm. So she finds me guilty based on that false belief, and then during sentencing it comes out that she was under the impression that I actually had access to the internet, even though that came up in the trial. But um, So there was that email, and then the day after I got released this other time I sent one to editor at tzcapuano.com, even though the website was already down. And when, this is in April when you were released? Yes, it would have been April 18th, the day okay. after I was released. And is that how you found out that it was down? Or is that because you ran it? No, um, I knew it was down before I was even released from custody. I think somebody mentioned it or something. You don't know who? I didn't really pay much attention. Mm -hmm. One of the guards or something at uh, Fraser. Okay, so are you willing to provide either of those emails? Sure, I will happily provide you the email. I'm not going to provide you access to my entire email account that has like literally thousands and thousands of emails from the past 10 or 15 years. Okay, all right. So if you had access to the internet at some point, you could pass on that email? I could forward those emails. If you give me an email address to forward them to, I will happily forward those to whatever email address, which I assume your email address is your first dot last name mm -hmm. at vpd.ca or something. Yeah, I can give you my card. Of course, you understand I don't have access to the internet from within custody, mm -hmm. contrary to what the judge claimed that she believed. So, I won't be able to provide you access to those emails until I'm released from custody, which won't be until after I'm convicted and sentenced and everything else. So. Okay. And there hasn't been an exception to that in the time that you've been incarcerated? It's always been um, no access to the internet? Is Absolutely that specific? Correct. I'm just curious. Is yes. that specific to you? No. Or? No. Okay. Easy Corrections has a very strict policy against it. Nobody has any access to the internet in there. Okay. Okay. So, I mean, we're just trying to get your side of things. We're going to um, write up our summary of this statement, and I'll let the Crown know that you're willing to provide that information. Sure. Uh, which is helpful. Uh, so, when did the website become accessible again? Oh, I think I already asked you that, right? And you weren't sure? 
Over this weekend, for sure, on Sunday. I don't so know. So has it been more than 48 hours? Uh, I'm just, I'm, I'm trying to get some clarity here on, like, um, I had no reason to believe, nor did anyone else, uh, that the website was going to stay offline. Mm -hmm. um, and I was going to apply for a stay of the probation order in the Court of Appeals, because I'm still I'm appealing uh, these convictions and sentences. Um, but since it was already offline, I heard, oh, well, it can wait, it's not high priority. Um, but there's this issue that if I have a probation condition that requires me to take all necessary steps to ensure some website that I say I don't have any influence or control over, um, if it comes back online, how quickly am I supposed to then take steps to... So I understand like, your argument. I'm admitted after a day, a week, yeah. or what? No, I understand your argument, but as far as Crown sees it, mm -hmm. it was never offline. That's... dude... So that's going to be... That's, but I'm telling you, that's where they're coming from. So you're, you're, you're arguing that because I had a password, you consider that offline. Crown's saying, no, I don't consider that offline. So Crown, uh, they're, in answer to your question, I don't know how long it's been live. We're looking into that right now. We know for sure it was live yesterday, yeah. it's live today. There's nothing in the wording of the condition that says that it has to be offline or something. It well, says it says it, it can't be available on the internet. Right. And no it's longer you... available. Mm -hmm. If there's a password on there, it is not available. In your definition. But with the password on there, you have no idea whether or not there's actually anything behind the password. And they have Therefore, no idea how many people have access to that password. Well, it seems okay. that before they can it becomes, use me of something, they have to first It becomes more challenging there's... because what is behind that password? There might be nothing. There might be even worse material back there. Yes, there might be. But we don't you, can't, know. you can't prosecute and convict somebody on suppositions like that. Well, that's... Oh, the door is locked, so there must be something bad going on behind there. Come mm -hmm. on. I think it's more about not necessarily what might exist beyond the password. Is the fact that it was available, albeit at a reduced at a reduced um, amount of people giving access. I mean, they so have, that's that's something for the courts, right? That's not that's not for me. It's something for the courts, but we know mm -hmm. how the system works. I'm going to be denied bail, and then I'm going to spend six months or nine months in custody waiting for it to actually get to the courts, mm -hmm. and then I'll be found guilty anyway because I mean. Is there anything on the website about uh, these more these recent probation breach cases? Yes. Good. I'm assuming disclosure material is on there mm -hmm. from these cases. What about transcripts? There's um, snippets of transcripts. Hmm. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Ugh. All the sugar was in the bottom. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, you have said in previous interviews that you, the website will never come down, that yes. you want it to remain live, but now, wait, wait, do wait, you wait, still wait. feel that way? Do you feel that you want it to remain live, or do you feel that... I have no recollection of ever saying that I wanted the website to remain live. Mm -hmm. I have a recollection of saying that the website will not come down, mm -hmm. and the reason I said that is because I have no control over it. The judge orders me to take down the website, and I say to her in court, order all you want, but it's not going to cause the website to come down. And then this most recent time, she says, well, you understand that I just made a finding that you do have control over the website. I'm like, are you fucking delusional? I didn't say this to her, mm -hmm. but I should have. Um, just because she says that I have control over the website doesn't mean that I have control over the website. Like, guilty beyond a reasonable doubt should require some actual evidence. Um, and all of these convictions that I keep getting, which are all under appeal still, and mm -hmm. um, so far they've all been just based on inferences, but neither here nor there. Um, it's not a question of whether or not I want the website to come down, um, and I mean, I don't even know if it is relevant to say if I want the website to come down. I mean, it, it has no bearing on anything. Um, mm -hmm. If I don't have the means to cause the website to come down, it doesn't matter what I want. Mm -hmm. If the website came down completely, no password, nothing, you can't even find the mm -hmm. URL at all, how would you feel about that? Um, before I answer that, let me ask you, you had said that over the past month uh, the website has been showing up in Google. I disagree with that. I've checked in Google, I've done some searches, and um, since I've been out of custody, there's been absolutely nothing in Google about the website. So. We, we have screenshots, you'll get them at Disclosure. So. There is little previews on Google. Previews on Google? Mm -hmm. Subsequent to my release from custody? 
No, previews of the website, yeah, subsequent. Fascinating. Um, I don't believe you, but... Okay. Um, I'm not lying to you. And if, yeah, I can only tell you what I've seen. If the website were to come down, I honestly wouldn't give a shit because since there's nothing requiring me to stay in BC, I have no intention of staying here any longer than, than necessary. And the only reason I'm still here now is because mm -hmm. I'm prosecuting these appeals. And I didn't want to just abandon the appeals because the appeals, in my opinion, are so strong. Like the, mm -hmm. the stuff the judge did and the Crown did is so outrageous that these appeals either have to be granted um, or it just shows how ridiculous the justice system is here. Mm -hmm. And so that's the, re that's the only reason I haven't already left. Okay. And if you went to the States, where would you go? If I went to the U.S., um, most likely I would return to Los Angeles. Um, and there's no point in discussing what I would do uh, if I was to go back to, or when I go back to the U.S., because I'm going to be out of this jurisdiction, and so it's not going to matter what I'm going to do. Okay. Um, maybe a more relevant question then is, how do you feel about Desiree? right now and would you want to continue contact would you is she out of your system what's going on on that front first i have no interest in having any contact with her um i haven't for many years the only contact i had with her before was because of our son the son that i raised and i had custody of and then she took and ran off to arizona with him after being gone for nine years and then took steps to get me deported to this country um and then took steps to go on the news media and such and like say all this stuff about me um, and then take further steps uh, for me to be convicted of criminal harassment, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but there's, there's no history of any contact between us other than um, trying to make arrangements uh, for custody or visitation of our son. Mm -hmm. And there are some email threads that go on and on and on and on because there's just back and forth. Um, I have no interest at all in having anything to do with her, um, but I continue to be subjected to the results of her actions. I'm still in Canada, I'm still fighting these stupid, ridiculous uh, criminal cases um, that all stem from her. Mm -hmm. Um, I haven't had contact with my son since 2016. Why do you suppose that is? Because of me? No, I don't think so. Yeah. It's difficult to put something behind you when you're still being subjected to it. Mm -hmm. If somebody has their boot on your head and they're holding you on the ground and they're telling you, why can't you just move on? Why can't you just forget about this? Wow, fucking hard to do when they've still got their boot on your head. Mm -hmm. Anyway. If there's any concern or if what you're getting at with that is, do I think that I would ever harm her physically? No. I would never harm anybody physically unless it was in self-defense or defense of another or defense of property, blah, 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 blah. Um, as for psychological harm, that's a ridiculous premise that your justice system up here actually gives credence to, but you can't harm somebody psychologically. It doesn't exist. It's like... It's an abstract concept. Like, you can hurt someone's feelings. Oh, sure. Is that what I went to prison for for three years? Because I hurt her feelings? Come on. Mm. Anyway. I guess we've reached that point where we've said everything that there is. Yeah, I guess I just want a clarification on that. So you will not harm her physically. I will not harm her physically. I can't harm her psychologically. It's simply not possible. Like, it's like saying... Um, you can cause somebody to fear for their safety. Well, no, a person can cause themselves to fear for their safety. Like, an external entity cannot cause another person to experience fear or to experience an emotion. I mean, emotions and sentiments are all self-induced. Okay. By creating the website caused psychological duress, whether or not you want to acknowledge it or not, would you continue that type of behavior down in the U.S. if you were to go across? I guess, or in the future even from up here. In the future meaning after the probation orders have expired? Well, leaving this room right now, I mean, do you have any intention of continuing to cause her duress? At this point right now, I have no intention um, 
I have no intention to cause her any duress. I don't believe that she is experiencing any duress because of the website, because like I said, if she was, there's steps that she could take. Mm -hmm. GoDaddy is based in Arizona. She lives in Arizona. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not that hard for her to get the website taken down in Arizona if there's actually anything wrong with it. But um, she hasn't done that, not a single thing. Anyway, no, I have no interest or intention <coughs> in causing her any kind of duress. She is a psycho and a sociopath who causes enough problems for herself. Um, there's nothing that I would need to do to cause her any problems. And what's more, because she's a psycho and a sociopath, there's nothing that I can do that would actually affect her anyway. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, I'm trying to think, like, what would be the absolute worst thing that I could do to her, and would that even affect her? Would she even care? I mean, she wouldn't. No matter... Whatever bad circumstances might befall her, she's just going to use those to get other people's pity and sympathy and such. Which is probably why she hasn't actually taken any steps to get the website taken down. Hmm. And if she were to take these steps, or if we were to get the court order that we were talking about to take these steps to get it down, if it's still being hosted by GoDaddy, um, what are the instructions for this anonymous third party to do if the website gets taken down? There are no instructions. So there is, do they have access to the site data, as far as you know? Has it been hard drived? Has it been saved? Were there any instructions to do so? Will um, it pop up again on another serving site? Listen, I, I can't say about that. I don't know. Because um, that's what you told us in the past. Yes, but I said a lot of things in the past. Um, mm -hmm. I said things that I could not have possibly been involved in. Mm -hmm. um, because I was deliberately trying to show, or I was specifically trying to show, that the police and the courts and the, the prosecutors uh, would rather pursue and stick with a false admission that couldn't possibly be true than to actually investigate and get to the truth of the matter. Mm -hmm. um, and that's exactly what happened. And even the judges, I mean, everybody completely ignored the fact that it would have been impossible for me to set up the website because I was at Fraser and there is no internet at Fraser. I mean, I, I couldn't have possibly had access to the source material and stuff. Mm -hmm. But I admitted to that and everybody just ran with that and I'm going like, wow. But, mm -hmm. And then when I testified in court that this is ridiculous and people all just went with that admission. Like it would have physically been impossible for me to do that, but everybody just accepted it. And then they tried to twist it around. But. Mm -hmm. And you had two websites before, is that correct? Two websites. Well, okay. Um, there was one website, but the original website went offline at some point in 2018, and then it was put back online under a different uh, domain name. Okay. Um, but a website refers to the content, not the URL. Okay, like, so you have two URLs. Right. The one. URL is like a telephone number. I mean, okay. it's disassociated from the device itself. So the book two URLs had the same content? Just building on it as time progressed? For the most part, yes. Okay, and then why did the one um, URL go offline? This was already discussed, they testified about it at the trial. Okay. Um, boy, you guys really should be more better informed, and I would think that since it took you four weeks before you came and arrested me, which, based on what you're saying, mm -hmm. based on this claim that as far as the Crown is concerned, the website's been uh, online all this time, and I failed to report four weeks ago, it seems strange to me that you're coming and arresting me on this now. I think it's something happened recently, and I suspect it's like you're saying that the password thing went away on the weekend or something, and I, I'm pretty sure that's why I was arrested now. Like, I'm quite confident if, the, if what you're saying is true, um, and the password that was on the website remained there, we probably would not be sitting here right now. I don't know that that's true. I think that we thought you were leaving the Balkan house this week is probably more accurate. I mean... And where were you going to go? A lot harder target to find. But why would you think that I would stay at the Balkan house all this time anyway? It's no secret that I hate it here. I despise this country and I hope you yeah. all as well. I won't say that. Um, I'm sick of this country and the politics and the raging feminism and all this. And, um... What was my point? Oh, yeah. Well, we can choose to disagree on that. I'm, I'm choosing to believe that something went wrong with the password or something over the weekend, and that's fine. It'll come out in trial, anyways. No. Um, uh, so, 
you, the one you all went down, you were explaining that to me, and then you talked to me about how I need to be better informed. Is that something you want to continue, or are we just going to leave that at that? Um, better informed, meaning we've already covered all this ground. Like, and I testified trust. about it, yeah. and from the previous interrogations, and okay. it's the whole thing is getting kind of repetitive. I get that. Yeah. Um, all right. So just so I summarize what you've been telling me, because I want to get it right. Uh, you haven't had the controller to the website for years. Can you tell me, like, how many years? Can I just have a, a number on that? The current version of the website, and I'm and not Desi saying current. Piano? Yes, the yeah. one accessible through that uh, domain name. Mm -hmm. um, went online at some time in 2018. I don't know exactly when because I was in custody. I became aware of it in November or December of 2018. Um, and so from that time until now, I've had no involvement in the website and I've had no uh, administrative access or authority or control over it. Okay, so if I'm understanding correctly then, that's not your URL, you didn't even create that URL? That is correct. But the content was transferred from your website that you had ownership of onto this website? Yes, because when I was arrested in 2016, I made arrangements with my friend Liz Munoz mm -hmm. to um, look after the website while I was in custody. Okay. Um, apparently, she slipped up at some point and forgot to renew the hosting plan or something, and that's why the original website went offline. Okay. Because she was responsible for looking after it, I guess she felt bad or something, and that's why she made the arrangements to have it put back online, but the original domain name was no longer available, hence DesiCapuano.com. Okay. Thank you. So, and then further to that, Liz is the person who's arranging for things. You don't have any access to the person who actually has control of the site outside of that editor at desicapilano.com email. Um, to be a little bit more specific, I cannot say that Liz is currently or has continued to arrange anything. Um, I know that she made the the original arrangements for the site to be put back online, and then when I became aware of the site, I told her I don't want anything to know. I don't, I don't want anything to do with it or anything to know about it. I don't... Sorry, my grammar's getting jumbled up. I don't want anything to do with it, or and I don't want to know anything about it because of the probation conditions, and as long as I don't know who's running it or who's involved in it, then I can't be compelled um, to disclose that information. So, whether she continued to have any involvement beyond that point or not, I couldn't say. And that was in 2016 when you initially gave her control of it, or in 2018 when the new website popped up? 2018. 2018, okay. <coughs> um, and then you've just been sending your disclosure stuff through to the editor email so that they had access to it through that? That's an inference that you're making that you seem like you're trying to get me to admit to, but I haven't actually said that I sent any disclosure to anybody. Okay. So I said, um, for the sake of argument, if I had done that, okay. it wouldn't violate any probation conditions. Um, but I did not state that I did or didn't send any disclosure material to anybody. For that matter, I haven't even stated that I've had any of that disclosure material in my possession. Okay. I can say, that uh, that disclosure material has been put onto the internet. I'm not saying onto the website, I'm saying onto the internet in general. Um, and that occurred while I was in custody. So again, couldn't have been me that done it because I've been in custody. Mm -hmm. So you're saying that disclosure information from your court cases have been on the internet, not necessarily this site, in other locations? Um, that's fair and reasonable to say, sure. Okay. And do you want to tell me any of those potential websites? No. Well, wait, wait. I'm not saying that it's on a website. I'm saying on the internet. Mm. Um, a website is just a particular protocol or uh, segment of the internet. The internet is the actual network of computers. Mm -hmm. The World Wide Web or the um, websites, if you will, uh, that's just one part of the internet. So information can be stored, not necessarily connected to a URL, is what you're saying, or to a website right. itself? Right. Like, there could be servers um, that don't have a website running on them, or don't have uh, a web server running on them, they're just used for storage or something. Mm -hmm. So when I say that, as far as I know, 
that disclosure material and other material related to my cases, like transcripts and other interviews and videos and stuff. Um, when I say that as far as I know it's on the internet, I mean it's on a computer somewhere in the world that is connected to and accessible via the internet. So not necessarily retrievable by a Google search? Oh, it absolutely wouldn't be no. uh, accessible okay. through Google. So like a personal computer that has access to the internet? Or a server. Or a server. Like any huge data center in Phoenix, Arizona, with a big GoDaddy sign on the front, for example. Okay. All right. And no idea how that would have gotten there? Even if I did, I wouldn't say. Yeah. Okay. And even if, even if I did have any idea how it got there, it has no bearing on the probation conditions because, again, there's nothing in the probation conditions that prohibits me from publishing or sharing or disseminating any information about the cases. Mm -hmm. I guess except if that information, hypothetically sent by you, to this GoDaddy server ended mm -hmm. up on the DASI Capilano website, there's a bit of a nexus there. Um, well, then there would be the issue of it being, um, how can I say, it being associated with that particular domain name. Mm -hmm. um, but, hmm, like, I mean, the probation condition is so poorly written because there's so many technical questions that come up from it, like exactly this one. Um, like, okay, let's say if there's the domain name desicapuano.com, but the website, all the content of the website gets deleted. So it's no longer there, but the domain name is still there because you can't delete a domain name. I mean, mm -hmm. that you just have to wait for it to, for the registration to expire. Um, <clears throat> so would that mean that the condition has been complied with if all the content of the website is gone, even though the domain name still remains? But if you try to go to the site, you'll just get a, a 403 or a 401 error message mm -hmm. saying that the file doesn't exist. Yeah. Well, that would be a 404. Okay. Um, Are you asking me? Yes. Okay. Um, you know what, that's that's debatable, and I think we would go to Crown for their guidance on that one. Mm. All right, so let's say if the Crown then agrees that, okay, all the content is gone, it's understandable that the domain name exists until it's until the registration is done, and mm -hmm. I don't know how long it's registered for right now, but let's say a year or five years or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, but all the content is gone, so they're satisfied with that. So then if somebody uploads new, completely different, unrelated content that has nothing at all to do with Capuano, um, I mean, that's not a Desi Capuano or Desiree Capuano website, it's still, but it's using that domain name. Mm -hmm. So, is that violating the probation conditions? I think the challenge was it was created as a hate website, but if it's no longer being used... Please it... define the term hate website. You guys have used this a number of times and nobody can give any definition for it, so... I guess harassment, targeting one particular person? Is telling the truth about somebody is telling the truth about the bad conduct that a person has engaged in that has harmed other people, is that considered harassment? I think so, in a public oh. forum where you're so, engaging with media and you're drawing attention to it. She's engaging with media. So, let's say if a pedophile moves in next door and there's people that live in my apartment building that have children, and so I put up a sign letting those people know, hey, watch your kids around him, he's been convicted in the past of, uh, what do you call it, sexual interference or something here? Mm -hmm. um, so, based on what you just said, that also would be harassment, wouldn't it? So, are you comparing your ex-wife to a pedophile? I think my ex-wife is a lot worse than a pedophile, but okay. that's just my opinion. Has she been convicted of anything? <laughs> Please. Yeah. So, if a person hasn't been convicted of something, does that mean that they have I just don't it? think you're comparing apples to apples, right? So, it has been determined by the courts mm -hmm. in Canada that it is a website used for harassment and victimization of your wife, your ex-wife. Mm -hmm. Um, so, I don't know. Well, if that's the case, mm -hmm. then why do they insist on not prosecuting me for criminal harassment? Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm sure you've seen that aspect of my background that I've been that was the initial That was the initial charge. Right. And so, subsequently, it's uh, sufficient to just keep running the breaches if you continue to breach your conditions. There's no need to bring back another harassment charge for that. Really? Mm hmm Okay. It kind of seems like prosecuting somebody for um, trespassing when really they committed a home invasion. But. It's about re-victimization, and I think that's probably been explained to you.
Well, no, it hasn't, because every time somebody brings up something like that, and I point out, well, if the goal is to protect Capuano, then why is it that you guys are focusing all your efforts on putting me in jail rather than focusing your efforts on a U.S. court order to take the website down? Mm -hmm. because, because you have openly stated that it doesn't matter where it gets hosted, you're going to keep popping it back up on the Internet, or someone's going to keep popping it back on the Internet. So is that the most valid use of our resources Clearly to, continue, me isn't accomplishing anything. to continue writing MLATs to get these websites taken down if they keep popping up on different servers. It seems to me mm -hmm. that the tactic that you guys are taking, locking mm -hmm. me up, is accomplishing absolutely nothing. Mm -hmm. The website is still there. Um, it seems to me that getting a U.S. court order um, to take down the website, which I know part of the reason you won't do it is because there's no way a U.S. court would grant such an order, but um, it would seem to me that that would probably be a much more effective route to go, though. Mm -hmm. I mean, clearly locking me up is not accomplishing anything. No, and I think there is a theory that you you like to be inside. I mean, it's interesting, it's your last week at the Balkan House when all of a sudden the passwords come off the website, and you were expecting us. Of course I was expecting you. I was mm -hmm. expecting you from the day that I was released. Yes, we, I mean, we were a bit tardy, weren't we? I was and so you gave us a little bit more of a incentive to get you uh -huh. quicker? Sure, okay. That's... Um, if my time was running out, okay, well... And you had no plans to go or anywhere else? Hmm. But let's say if my time at the Belkin House was running out, mm -hmm. and what is the theory then that I was concerned that I was going to be sleeping on the streets? Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, Did you have another plan? Yes. Okay, so you do have somewhere to go. Well, of course I've got places I can go. I can go back to Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. I've got friends and family in Los Angeles. I'm sure I'll be okay when I get there. Mm -hmm. Of course it takes money to get there, but... Yeah. So not a, not a short-term solution, more of a long-term solution. Oh, yes. Yeah. Mm. Anyway. Okay. Um, I'm going to go pop out to my partner, see if there's anything that I've missed asking you. Um, and then, if not, then I guess we can wrap this up. Great. Okay.
Um, it looks like we're pretty much ready to wrap it up. Is there anything that you wanted to say that you haven't said? Any questions that you might have or anything? Yes. Okay. I would love for you guys to show me some proof uh, to support this claim that the website became publicly accessible over the weekend. Because mm -hmm. it seems strange to me that we're going through all of this, yet there's no actual proof of it. I mean, how do I know that any of this is even true? So, what do you want? Like a screenshot, a captured screenshot? I would like you to. I would like to see you pull up the website and show me right now that it's actually accessible. Because a screenshot could have been taken at any time. It could have been doctored or something. Mm -hmm. I mean, that doesn't prove anything. Okay. I won't be doing it on my personal device, but there is a computer next door that we can pull it up on okay. and get that set. Okay. Other than that, is there anything else? I don't believe that there is anything else that you would be able or willing to assist me with at this time. Okay. All right. Um, I'll get that ready, and then we'll we'll wrap it up in here, and then go. Get that ready. Well, I'll just get it loaded up on the computer for you. you open a web browser. You just can yeah. Find the URL I understand, but it's not a place that we typically let people who are in custody in. So mm. we're going to prepare the room and then get you into it. This is an interview room where it's prepared. Yeah, I understand. Um, seems suspicious to me, but okay. Okay. I don't know. All right, you've asked, and I'm willing to comply with that request, but it's it's not something that we do typically, so it will take a couple minutes to prepare. Okay. If you'd like us to search it in front of you, I have no problem doing that, but I'm not going to bring you into the room without prepping my partner first and getting everything out that we sure, need of course. to about. Yeah, it just seems strange that you don't have like a device or something you can just put on the table here and go, you know, there's the website, there's proof that it's up and running. Yeah, no, I didn't prepare that. We don't have a laptop. Maybe you should let me go and come and arrest me again later when you're ready. Yeah? When, when works for you? Um, <laughs> tomorrow morning. Tomorrow morning? All right. I might have a conflict. We'll see if we can get this set up today.
did my best to try to get you access to that. Unfortunately, my work firewall is not letting me into your site. So yeah. I can't provide you that at this point. Sure. Okay. Um, this, sorry. this sure is, yeah, I don't believe you. And that's um, fine. That's fine. Um, I know that I've seen it. Our analyst has seen it. Crown has seen it. So um, if you need to see it at some point, I'm sure that will be allowed to you. But I just can't operate. I can't give you that option right now. Uh -huh. Okay. Um, so if there's nothing else, I'll end the interview. Sure. Wait, wait, okay, sure. so I just want to make sure that this is clearly stated on the record okay. that I have been arrested and detained now based on an allegation that the website became publicly accessible again within the past few days, yet, for some reason, the VPD is not able to actually show me that the website is actually online. That's okay, that's on the record. Just to clarify that you are being arrested because it has been live since your... Um, release from custody and it hasn't been taken down. So You've already admitted that you have absolutely no evidence to support that whatsoever. Okay, but it's it's what your argument against what Crown is saying and so in Crown's opinion, like we've discussed already, mm -hmm. it has been live this whole time. <clears throat> we agree to disagree on that. Okay. But yes, you're right, I wasn't able to show you today. Right, even though you have other devices that don't go through your firewall by now. Okay, whatever. I, I think the whole thing is just a load of crap. I think that yeah. You guys, for whatever reason, or probably the Crown, for whatever reason, is just trying to give me a hard time. Um, and that's why you're bringing up this thing about like this reporting thing. I mean, the Crown himself stated that I was only required to report one time. Mm -hmm. And I think you guys probably figured that I was going to screw up or do something wrong at some point, and like it's been four weeks and I haven't done anything wrong, and so I think you just came and arrested me just for this. And you'll find something while I'm in custody for the next... Well, you'll try. I don't believe you about this website, about it being online and stuff. I think this is just nonsense that you guys are making up so you can justify bringing me down here. So. Okay, I'm sorry you feel that way. Mm. Um, I mean, your inability to, like, you guys didn't print out any pages from it? You didn't, like, it was online? Will you accept a printout? I can get my analyst to send me something and I can print I mean, it. That would be something. Okay, that's fine. I'm just not going to search it on my personal phone because search. I believe that you still have... Um, access to the website and likely might be able to have access to that information. So we are going to disagree about that, but oh. I can get you a printout if you sure. would like. Um, I mean, sure, that's fine, but like I said, a printout doesn't really prove anything. Okay, so what do you want me to do here, Mr. Fox? I can, I tried to do what you asked me. Yes, and you're not able to. I'm not able to. I won't be doing it on my personal phone. That's the only other option that I have right now. I can send you a a stamp of what the analyst will be giving in court. I can get that printed out. They can send that to me right now, and I can print it out and show you. What would you like? Um, none of that would prove anything, so there's no point. There's no point. Okay. All right. So then I'm going to end this interview. Okay. Okay. So it's twelve. Or sorry, two thirty-one. Uh, we'll enter the interview. Uh, we're going to keep this recording live, though. But the audio video in here will stop. Okay. And we'll be ready to go in just a minute.
stand up and put the in cuffs again. Front or back? Um, we're going to do back, but I'll mm. double lock them. Were they closing on you last time? No, it's just, you know, I'm such a big security risk. Yeah, I know. We don't typically do front except for pregnant people. Really? Yeah. The last time you guys handcuffed me in the front, and in fact, most of the time I wasn't even handcuffed down at all. Oh, really? Yes, and we were outside smoking cigarettes and so while well, I was smoking. You were Kent and Roberts were just kind of standing around. Okay. That's fair. Different uh, strokes. Let me double lock them here for you. They're not too tight. So they should be fine. You're not going to be in them very long. There we go. Thank you. where I'll be in custody and physically incapable of taking the website down. Nice. Well, the argument would have been that you had four weeks to take it down. But regardless, so now if I go to custody for nine months, mm -hmm. that's nine months that uh, even if I had the ability to take it down, um, I wouldn't have to because I'm in custody. You can simply say that because I'm in custody, I don't have access to the internet, therefore I can't take it down. But you still have access to the phone, and you've said that other people have access to the internet, and they can do that for you, right? No, I never once said that <laughs> other people could do that for me. Well, what I said was that I have no idea who is running the website. Yeah, so even if you had access to the internet, your argument is that you can't take the website down, so when you're in custody, yes. Um, so it wouldn't matter whether you have internet access or not while you're in custody, because you don't have power over the internet. Or the website. Yes, based on my argument. But the police are control over it. Which is why it seems retarded then to detain me. Because by doing that, they're just ensuring that I wouldn't be able to uh, do anything with it. Mm -hmm. This came up at the previous bail hearing before. Yeah. arrived at the jail. We're just going to go, actually, we'll wand you first. Mm -hmm. uh, is there any problem that you guys are seizing this time? Or? Just your uh, the two USBs, the two SD cards, your phone, and your tablet. So all the electronic stuff. Yeah. Why do you guys keep seizing my electronic stuff not get any evidence from it, and then you hold it for like three years. Like I just got those things back a few days ago. Literally a few days ago. Yeah. It takes a while to get into them, especially when we don't have the passwords. Did you want to provide the passwords? No. Okay. But they're also encrypted, so passwords yeah. are not. I mean, so it's going to take a while. So that slows down yeah. our process, right? It's not that it's going to take a while. It's mm -hmm. not possible. Oh, okay. Um, the USB drives aren't encrypted, but... No, it's female. Go next one. There's nothing significant. I'm oh. pretty sure they said female. Oh, they said female. Oh, sorry. Okay. So you, we can't get into anything, you're saying? You'll be able to get into the USB drives, but like I said, there's nothing of um, interest on there. There's scanned transcripts and scanned legal documents because I have all this legal material that's been given to me in paper format yeah. that I've been scanning okay. um, into PDFs. But okay. That's all you'll find on those. The phone and the tablet, those are encrypted. So you won't find anything on there. Okay, good to know, thank you. Uh, 240, uh, Mr. Fox is in holding cells, end of recording.